Hey guys, it's Anne Marie. Hope everybody's having a great week. Um, my Lantern Oracle has been wanting to talk for some time, so we're going to see what this deck has to say. High Vibrate Ancestor Spirit Guides. Let me get a little shuffle in, please. <laughs> High Vibrate Ancestor Spirit Guides. Can we please get a divine message? Let's do Jeez, like four. Flipped out. Weren't you just a lucky ducky? <laughs> It's a long week. Okay. It's raining, so it's even darker than usual. Ah, 26, forgiveness. Hurt blocks our light. Yeah. Hmm. Strength of vulnerability. Number four. True power lies at the root of a perceived weakness. Oh, God, this is hit. I mean, the spirit's just hitting us hard today, isn't it? 24, emptied. The ending and beginning lie at either side of the same door. Ain't that the truth, too? That her just lying there. I think her, everything's over. But she's not even paying attention to the beautiful butterfly emerging in the background. Two, radical curiosity. Seen as, as, seen as if for the first time, every time. Right. Right. You can see it. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody is really um, focusing on the negative aspects of themselves or the negative parts of their life or a situation and not realizing that even holding on to that, the, the negative aspects of that, takes a lot of your energy and oftentimes I at least I didn't recognize that even the worrying and replaying things over in my head and um, not forgiving myself and not forgiving others takes a lot of my source energy and once I uh, you know work through a lot of the pain I had a lot more of the energy and you know the, we all, a lot of people always talk about forgiving other people. Forgiving other people is for us, you know, not for them. I'm talking about somebody who's not forgiving themselves. A blockage for me, this is just for me. I was working on forgiving other people for some time and I kept hitting roadblocks. And I went in to speak to my counselor at the time. This was a few years ago. And I said, you know, I know why I'm not unable to forgive other people. Because I can't forgive myself. And in order to forgive myself, I need to deal with my shame of things. And so I had to take a lot of steps back and then rework it like I've you know, said before, you know, we, you know, take the stairs to forgiveness. <laughs> um, I used to always say I forgave certain things or people or situations. However, I still hold, held on to that. And also a part of that was me taking responsibility for allowing these people or, or situations, whatever, to continually do things that I knew would hurt me. But yet I remained in those situations. So there is some accountability too for your pain taking responsibility, forgiving yourself, and then not allowing yourself to be in those same situations or around those same energies. Um, you know, you may be really focused on the ending of things or things not working out and not recognizing that, I mean, like I said, like this lady, look at the little butterfly in the background. She's like really in despair. Someone may have lost a child recently. A lost the birthing of something or what they thought to be something new that they were um, desiring and your mindset is thinking that you lost it because it may have not worked out please know spirit wants you to know that what's meant for you is already yours what's meant for you is already yours and what's yours is nobody else's And so, you know, spirit wants you to know that there's other things at play. The intuition, you know, uh, spirit, intuition knows way more than you consciously do.
And Spirit wants you to trust this process. Trust that with this ending, with this um, despair that you're in, you know, look at, you know, forgiving yourself and having an honest conversation with yourself about, um, you know, the situation. Because usually when we look back at things, we're like, well, you know, I did plan out well, or I knew that this person wasn't good for me, or whatever it is. And that's okay. Nobody's perfect, regardless of what they try to tell you or present themselves to be. And so Spirit wants you to forgive yourself, work through your shame, and recognize that this is actually whatever didn't work out wasn't meant for you at all. And if you're anything like me, sometimes we have to learn the hard way and it has to be super painful for it to resonate with us. Sometimes with, I'll speak for myself, I recognize that the reason why I had to learn the hard way and why it had to be painful was because I was taught that as a child. To have pain and despair. It's a conditioned thing, in case anybody doesn't know. When we are used to chaos and drama, you know, especially in our childhood or, or, or um, not knowing how things are going to go or walking on eggshells or someone who was contenderly sexually abused as a child or molested or just in a lot of chaos. And this could be in any type of uh, energies in your home where you had uh, narcissistic parents or family members or if you were the scapegoat. Um, sometimes um, unhealed people have children, oftentimes, right? This is what this is about. <sighs> Some of us have learned that loving and caring equals pain, not necessarily physical. I mean, that we, we know that, but I mean, Spirit, I need a better way to say this. You have been conditioned to believe and feel and think that um, growth has to be pain. And that's not always the case. Sometimes we make things painful for us to give um, substance to it. This is definitely for someone who had a chaotic childhood. And whether you're conscious of it or not, this is, um, if you're watching this, hopefully it rings a little bell because you may not be aware of this. You learned that in order to be successful, successful, it has to be hard and painful. The lessons have to be hard. Because that's what your childhood was. Hard. Challenging. No child should ever be put in adult situations or be in adult conversations. And it, ha I mean, it happens all the time. We know that. And oftentimes, what I've seen more times than I could count is a social worker working with families, uh, which is another thing I did for many, many years intensely in the home. Um, was that parents often would, you know, they all say this, my kid's really smart, they're intelligent, they know what they're doing, they know blah, 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 blah. I don't care if your kid is Einstein. Their brain's not developed until a certain age. And so certain concepts and reasoning skills aren't there yet. But as adults, we feel as though um, children have the same cognitive abilities that we do and can understand um, certain reasonings and certain concepts and their brain's not even developed yet. But we put this on to children, you know, well, you know that blah, 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 blah. 
No, the fuck they don't. What they know is what they see, how you and their, you know, your their other parent interact. The day of doing as I say, not as I do, have, have been over. It's ineffective, as we all know. So I, I, that's where the message, I know this message kind of went off to the side here, but there's something about your childhood that the chaos that you were in created a thought or a pattern or a belief system that growth or, or change or something has to be painful and it, it's not worth it unless there's blood, sweat, and tears. Not to say that there's not. But not every lesson has to be a hard lesson to learn. The more you recognize and understand that when things don't work out, that's what was meant for you so that something better and greater can come in is when these hard lessons will reduce and you will be able to understand them a little better. I hope this makes sense. I'm trying to do these videos short, but here we are. It already is 11-11. <laughs> 11 minutes. All right. So anyway, I hope everybody has a great day. Um, I hope that you're happy and healthy, full of joy. May you love and be loved.